money from the usable end after the check. So the time of use was after the time of check, and then they were able to change that uh, file argument, uh, perform um, something, uh, a malicious action without uh, of detection due to that uh, token issue. All right, so now we can actually talk about action by classes. So let's, let's start with the easy one, similar cre creation. We will take the read sensitive file and trust control, the rule that we will be working a lot with, um, and see how it works by default. So Falco can detect stuff either on the container of the set of thing, the try by doctor, um, or container D cryo, or uh, from within the pod in the, in the Kubernetes. And it doesn't really matter. So in this case, for the very simple um, demo, we're showing that uh, I'm stuck in the Docker container here, and that's good enough for our purpose. And when I'm, when I'm trying to, to count the, it's a shadow, of course, we see the top of triggers, and this particular rule, read sensitive file and trust it, is triggered. And this is how the trigger works, uh, looks like on the SDR. So this is the expected behavior. Now, how can we um, evade this rule? We can, as I said, use the synonym creation. So what we do is very sim simple. We create a synonym to its shadow called sh link, and when we can in sh link, get the password, hashes, and alpha is silent. Well, it's not really silent, but the rule is different. If you know it's warning, rather, rather than warning, we, we get no synonyms created. So first of all, this is detection bound rate, because instead of warning, we're getting notes. And the same creation, it monitors the same, it's another rule, monitors creation of the same over the sensitive files. And it's a shadow considered to be sensitive in this case. And this detection of the same creation is actually one of the protection mechanisms against the top to our deck. But we can bypass this rule as well, and pretty easily. What we can do, we can eliminate the same creation, notice, through the relative one. So I'm creating the relative the same relative signal pass to it's a security rather than uh, direct signal to the ETH shadow. We create the signal to the current directory or to one of the subdirectors in the current folder. It's a security in this case. We call it the security link. When we pass in the security link, growing up, once they are downstairs shadow, we're passing it and Falco is silent. So that means that Falco doesn't resolve the signals when uh, rule evaluation happens. And that's a problem, of course. And then we can use this uh, to our advantage as an um, Let's take a look at a couple other rules. Right below, it's right below rule. Uh, we can pass it based on the DNA. name. So if you see here, we, if you pass something into, uh, into the EC profile or root profile, you can see that the rules trigger. However, we can create, if we create the same link to the root directory, and then we can use this root thing to build all relative paths to whatever we want, that will be enough to make us. That, those tools. There is. How about hard things? Yes. Indeed, they, there was no file, there was no rule to catch uh, the cache station of the hard thing. So we, instead of lm s we're running lm to shadow, it's a shame, cat, again, after a sign. At least. And that was one of the fixes that um, we didn't manage to, uh, to get into Falcon version 0.31 back in January. Um, so that uh, that's all we did at this point. What else can we do? Uh, let's take a look at pseudo credential uh, privilege installation. That's one of the rules that was built specifically to detect the exploitation of the CD 2021-3156. If you remember, that's the CD in the, in the pseudo package. Um, that um, that allowed for a very very easy, well, relatively easy privilege installation for a user to root. Um, so, of course, one of the uh, typical and most common uh, exploits with POCs was by Warwick and this way. They just spin the Docker, download it, this is Python, download the exploit, run Python, and get the get root. And all that's more, more interesting, out was sad. So, that got me curious. And I try to understand what's going on and why the rule doesn't treat. 
What happens there uh, here, that you can see the asteroids, the trace of the asteroids, uh, that the actual pseudo execution here is through the pseudo binder and not through the pseudo end. So, what happens here on the Ubuntu specifically, the pseudo end is ascending to pseudo. And when we take a look at the at the rule, the proper end expects pseudo end. However, the actual rule gets the pseudo from the Python, and that's where the mismatch happens. So, the problem was that after the rule creation, um, they didn't follow up with the uh, with the exploits that coming up on the on the GitHub the OCs, and that's the problem. So this is kind of reversed from the center because in this case, rather than expecting the binary name, the rule expects the cynic name, whereas exploit provides the binary name. <coughs> okay, let's take uh, let's talk about the typical name. So Typical rule structures uh, rely, uh, relies on the program. Um, and this is very, very bad <laughs> dependency, and I'll explain why. Um, this is uh, the construct that the board describes to this. So in this case, it's the list of the um, of uh, strings. And this rule really sends the file contrasted to the same rule. What it uses, it uses several conditions. So first, the, the should be sensitive file, and the open reach should happen, which I guess translates to open, open as is false. And then the name exists, and then there's a bunch of end not conditions, which means those are accepted conditions, which means those were created to avoid all kinds of false positives. And every end not condition is actually a gateway into the bypass. Right. So what we are interested here, if we we think in here, how about we make our process belong to this user management binary system? So in this case, I know that Ubuntu doesn't have system debugging D. So how about we create a very small utility? We call it Huber Open and Read File. Huber stands for file for ultimate effect asset. <laughs> and we compile it into the system debugging data, as simple as that. And then we use the, the utility actually of this file and this one, and that's the, uh, the output uh, to this. Yeah. So that's what we do. We take this utility, read it into shadow, it dumps the contents, uh, contents of the it's a shadow, and file plays silent. Why? Because we named our utility system debugging data. So it's accepted from the rules perspective. The problem is that that's, this approach is not scalable because, of course, we can't we can create a small C utilities for everything that we want because that really duplicates the functionality. So, how about we go back to the same things? So, if we do it here, rather than using cat, we're cementing cat into the system delogging D. We call it system delogging D. And you know what will happen. Apple will think that we're opening the file by by using propane system D logging D, and of course it will accept this event here. Well, the thing is that simple rename also works. Why won't we just copy cat into system D logging D and create our own library and use it to create its shadow? And that still works. So bottom line here, the conclusion is reliance on propane is very, very good. What about parent and ancestor names? This is a bit trickier. Um, so let's take a look at another handy macro here. The same same rule. Read sensitive file and trusted. As you as you saw before, it relies on the macro and not CMP CP by password. So let's take a look at this macro. But Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm talking to right now. Okay. Let me join this uh, speaking panel here. I don't see him. I don't see his video on there. Oh, that's a shame. Jay, are you sharing your desktop or your presentation? <laughs> Uh, there we go. Yeah. 
but we don't see your video yet. Shit. Yes. You have to screen share, but I uh, don't see his camera. Well, that's probably because this is in the right room. That's why. <laughs> Recording in progress. Okay, sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. So, where are we? So, let's take a look at this. Oh, no. Yes. Just go. is that the rule is looking at the process, which name is CMPCP, and the P name, parent name, is one of those password parameters. So it means that all we need to do is create a script named password. So that's what I'm doing here. Cat password is a simple script. And the second name is actually copy on a sensitive file, second line, sorry, in the best Right? But now, because the Current name will be called password. This condition will get will be fixed, and it will, will keep silent. So it's that it's that easy to use the P name um, in order to be available to get accepted. Now, can this bypass be more generic? Yes, it can, because there are many rules where the ancestor names use one, two, three. It means as is the name one. It uh, means that that's the parent, uh, to is grandparent, and the grandparent parent, and this condition looks for one of the, uh, those ancestors to, to process names to be Google and the support accounts. So, um, what we, what I did there, I created the, another small utility called Super Take Parents, um, and I run cat, it's a shadow, and I'm calling the ancestor names Google accounts. And I'm saying create the fork tree of the level of three levels. So nested fork tree. And this utility will call the, the initial process Google account and then fork a necessary number of child, children, and execute this command. And because the Ancestor is called Google Accounts that uh, will reach the condition to accept the smart contract. And we have another basis. Great. So, enough with the settings and first names. What else can we do? Let's go.
we all know that, and we can see it's empty listener um, can custom accept the connection on another host, whereas uh, where, where this this one line on Chrome, Chrome will be connected. And Pocket triggers separate tools. Great. Um, this we want to see as the defenders. Now, how can we make access? How about we use another one like that, make node? Right. So this is doable if make node. We can use make node syscall from within the container, uh, but we can use usually. Um, by the way, for those who didn't know, the Kubernetes runs default Kubernetes setup runs but without any set components. So by default, you have all the syscalls available for you. So then we create the make node by looking to the beam and C. Um, and we can see that those those rules that were triggered before don't trigger right now. So we have this notice network to launch and campaign. And this rule is very easy to address with the methods that we already saw simulating or copying and inspired by the morning name in some way. Um, so that's good. But can we do better than that? Something more interesting. How about we use MSFL? No. MSFL and typical payload generation. Uh, utility from the other slides. I'm creating a reverse TCP payload to my host in ALF uh, S64 encoding it to copy into the container, running it, and of course, we talk about any detection, and it's amazing. So, the advice to you is to use the um, reverse MSF panel to generate the custom payloads. And indeed, this, this is a this is a bit difficult for right, to detect the, uh, the custom payloads, and that's more for the empty malware vendors rather than uh, behavioral software like uh, Um So that's, that's actually expected. Um, let's take a look um, at another type of the bypass. Um, so some of the rules contain conditions that rely on the common arguments. You can see here this problem that arcs contains dash e, and of course this is so that the NC, if there's an NC running in the container, we won't be able to pass exact parameter or dash c, and the same for NCAT. Now for those of you who know NC and NCAT, the, you understand that these are very powerful utilities with, with tons of options, and of course, um, because this dash e is very synthetic for comparison, what we can do here is just to run, we just run an NC with dash PE, which means reverse. Um, but other than that, it's the same functionality, and we don't see this from triggers. So before that, we can grab the seed map. Okay. It works for me. Yeah, that's what I figured. Like, I see the zone works for me, so what, what happened? Can I, can I continue? Yeah, you can continue. Okay, uh, so there you go. It's just uh, as easy as uh, setting up the additional flag dash V, and we do see that this snap that runs inside the container rule doesn't trigger anymore. We have another notice, but the fact is that we got past that rule that that simple using usage of the dash V flag. Um, very similar in the past on the rules is called search private keys. Um, so, what of course, what the packer tries to do here is to find an uh, idea or say an idea. The safe private is perhaps for the SSH connection. And the this is typical of search of the secrets um, on, the, on the compromised host. So, apparently, you slept pretty much during that. So. I didn't get that. There, there's somebody else talking in the forum on the end of Oh, yeah, up at Magic. 
that that one is, is pretty interesting. That's the that's the cluster from KubeCon 2018, and that's a training cluster that used to teach um, different forms. So there are two scenarios of attack. One the initial attack is a basic and then more advanced. And the basic attack, basic defense, that's very easy. And then there, there comes additional, uh, another attacker with a more elaborate attack scenario than uh, another, another, another defender. And then, and so when we use those scenarios to actually see how far it performs and whether we can bypass those uh, uh, attacks. All right, so let's start with the first scenario. That's pretty easy. So we are given the web shell into the pod, and um, when attacker achieves this, assuming the attacker achieves some kind of RC, HP, or whatever, but we're getting, the attacker is getting the web shell. And then um, they start to rubbish around to understand where they are, what's the language are, where, where am I right now, and then they understand that they are in the Kubernetes container. So, and uh, running env, uh, they can see, oh, I, I see all kind of Kubernetes here um, in my variables. And I can also query Kubernetes API version, and now I see the Kubernetes API version. And I can also see the last part secrets. There's a mounted service account token right here we can use. Now the question what we can do with that, right? And so for that, we, we curl in QCal so that to make this interaction with the Kubernetes API server easy, so that QCal tool, and we do get all, and uh, oh no, that's, that's too much time because it's trying to retrieve all the resources. So how about we just do get pods, and get pods returns three pods, and then attack the realizes, okay, so we are on this one, on dashboard, because that's the hosting. Okay, so now attacker knows where they um, where they located, and they try can I this to figure out what kind of permission they have, and then they try can I create what? Yes. Okay, and that's the typical scenario. At this point, the attacker usually creates the pod, the privilege pod, and that's how they escape into the house. So of course, the attacker creates the YAML file for the Bitcoin error. Uh, which represents uh, Bitcoin miner deployment, and they apply, and there we go. We have Bitcoin there running as one of the folks in the cluster, and at that point, the attacker is happy because, excuse me, the, the miner is gone, and the attacker goes to sleep. Uh, now, this is the end of the first scenario, but I want you also to show you how the how the Falcon uh, reacts to the languages as well. Because so far, you've seen that Falcon, Falcon has been very, very active. So if you're a SOC analyst, you will see this pretty much immediately. You will not be able to ignore that. Okay? And same with the link is <coughs> if a type that comes on the pod and runs the link is like this, you can see how like the file goes. So the point is, it's, um, the attacker is not aware of all the presence. That's the point. Now, second scenario is more elaborate. We start with the point where attacker can deploy the bot. However, instead of deploying the bot, the attacker tries to do something more, something smart. There is this one liner, which is very cool. The attacker creates the, um, the bot. However, it uses, they use kind of neat tricks here. So they call initial LOL. They use the host pid namespace rather than regular namespace isolation. They also run NSAM to snatch the mount namespace. And then they run bash. And then they run this pod as a privilege. You can see privilege tree. So this one runners will give attacker the access to the host. Because there's no big names, there's no mount names, and the vector will be able to access. You can see that uh, root all the containers pretty much root on the hosting in this case. And 
the, from this point, the banker is able to access the also Docker socket, which means that banker can do the um, Docker PS command and even deploy the containers not part of this point because the attacker is stuck into the Docker socket at this point. So that's what the packet is doing. Or they do Docker run dash the secure Kubernetes Bitcoin there. And right now, this container is running on the Docker lab, not on the Kubernetes side. And this is this is new because kubectl get pods will not show this container at this anymore. And that might treat the defender if they are not looking to be. So you can see the Bitcoin there runs, the previous Bitcoin runs on the Kubernetes, and there it now we deploy it on the, the Docker script. Uh, great. However, this attacker um, is not dying, but they try to do, they try, they pick in about persistence, so they want to uh, to deploy a node port service to open the port on this particular node for the future access in case defense kills the for the game as they already did in the first scenario. So what attackers does here they rummage to the kubelet the kubelet config look for all kind of um, service account tokens available they found the service account token that belongs to the cube system namespace, and that one can do pretty much everything. So let's see, can they get sick with me? Yes, you can. So at this point, you can do whatever they want, and attacker creates, um, you can see a cube system node port service, and they call it ECL management to confuse the defense again, another smart tree, and they have an open port from this point. And now let's try to be an attacker. However, you saw that Pop was very, very active in the point. Very active. So, so if again, if attacker doesn't think about Pop, then they would be very easily detected by the person or not. So now let's try to do all this to perform the second scenario without treating the Pop and see if we if we can. So enumeration is pretty easy. Environment. Craft cube. Okay, we now we get the the ID of the Kubernetes event server so far, nothing on the alpha side. These um, these detections where they are uh, because of the Fox container started and detected themselves by itself. So that's that's normal. So final detections. So now we are going to run that. Um, we're current for the kubectl. However, we're not running kubectl. We rename it kcup to evade one of the rules that will detect the kubectl. And now we're running that one line. However, one line is a bit different. All right, we're still session the host state uh, namespace, but we're running now our favorite uh, Fubra latest image that already has all those goodies. We don't try to create a container, we don't need that, but we're mounting that bar around to get the access to the buffer socket. We don't need privilege as long as we have access to the Docker socket, and we um, and we can uh, we can do whatever we want with that. Uh, we run gbash instead of jash instead of bash, and by by using doing that, we, we will evade another rule that uh, that will detect the spawn shell otherwise. So we have a couple detections here with this command, and the fact that we're using uh, Fubra latest that uh, makes things easier. So when we run this, we have one detection so far. It's, uh, it's the, uh, the rule called unexpected connection to the Kubernetes event server. And the one line runs the gdocker ps, which means we can, we can we have access to the Docker socket as, as expected, and we can control it basically through that one line. So now what we're doing, we and performing gdocker run dash d, the same, we're deploying Bitcoin miner. You can see that the Docker downloads the image right here and deploys the image. So we have Bitcoin run running. Again, the same, same old triggers. No other rules so far. And now we're rummaging through the kubelet. Again, by using the same one liner, we're rummaging through the kubelet mounted 
uh, tokens. We've, we want to be trying to find the one that's the most interesting one that will get the most, as most privilege to deploy that node function. There we go, we got that token. Now we can we put it as a variable and we're using kubectl. Uh, um, with this specific token. And now we can get the secrets and can do whatever we want. Can I? No, that's not what we want. Oh, can I? Yes, and you can see that you can do pretty much whatever we want with this particular token. And then we, as an attacker, we finally deploy this node port service. Uh, we call it still to be sneaky, and all of this, and now we own uh, all the cluster. All of this while triggering just a single uh, uh, rule, the unexpected connection. And all this rule is notice. Okay, so notice, so you can imagine if there's a, if the SOC had. Uh, a problem with false positives and they only enable rules um, warning and up, then all this attack will go will fly under the radar of the SOC. So that's all that is happening. And um, another another scenario, I guess, the, uh, the SOC think, might think, oh, this room is uh, triggering too much. Well, but I mean, this one makes uh, much of false positives. Why won't we um, disable? Then we do better than that. Still, there were several triggers there, so maybe we can do better than that. Well, yes, we can. So here's the improvement. The improvement scenario contains the different one-liner. The one-liner again smashes the hostility namespace. Um, again, uses the latest. We're using Gbash. However, right now we're mounting far up. We're mounting valid as well. And we're starting uh, pretty much the same. And we're starting the GMesh. So that we know that will generate from uh, one rule trigger, and that's fine. But we need access to that uh, option. So right now we're in one of the in the first container in the folder latest. Now what I'm doing here, I'm pulling another folder latest from within the container. And after that, I'm tagging it as a sysdict sys. So what I'm doing here, I'm actually tagging, I'm renaming the container image as a sysdict image in the context of this specific Docker server. Which means that Falcon will think that this container image is actually not full latest, but when it will query the the doctor will think, oh, that's actually a Cisic image. A Cisic image in the rules is an accepted image. So that image is allowed to do pretty much whatever they want, including connecting the, to the Kubernetes API server, because otherwise there will be too many false positives, because this is a security image. However, this is not really a security image. This is our image that we just remade from different things. But that's good enough for us. So from now on, we are starting another container from within the container. You can see what I'm doing around the special language and see again we need to map it partly to rummage to the cube tokens again, but now I'm starting CISIC, which really is uh, Kubernetes. So you can see that it has all our good tools uh, inside. Our Falcon that thinks that it's, it's really CISIC, and you can see that. Um, from now on, I'll be silent. Why? Because it thinks all those commands are performed from the city cage. And now we can rubbish through the Kubernetes tokens, find the token that we need, and do whatever we want without talking anything. And the last interesting command that I want to show is this one. So, um, I'm running g 2 and yes, this is a nested container in the nested container, in the nested container. So, triple nested container, 
but hey, it's, it works. So that's all we need. Um, and we're passing the token that we found. Uh, in secure CTLS verify and to communicate with Kubernetes again server. And this is important. We're marking the cache here for the cube couple as a tech because otherwise the cube couple will try to store the cache into the root directory, which will trigger another loop. So we need that cache here, specification here. And this can I list will give us pretty much everything we need. So you can see the uh, can I list have star star here, that means we can do whatever we want for with the resources that we have on the cluster. And just want to show you how many detections we have overall, two detections. So we have two notices of unexpected connection to the list data server. And we own the cluster with all this sequence of that. Can we do better than that? I'll leave it as a homework. All right, and uh, we are almost out of time here, so I want to be quick about the last uh, two slides. Um, this is, but I do want to show it because this is negative research result. So um, Falco had this issue with the um, with dropping uh, dropping uh, events and the the do a bunch of fixes in the version 0 0.15. However, those drop event, drop system events still still fine in the, the product, and there were multiple multiple issues all open. So I, I thought, how about we use that to get us out of all together and we try to, and so I created the utility that's called Kubernetes, and I tried to sneak the malicious actions uh, into the benign so I'm running 200,000 denied syscalls, then I'm performing the malicious section, and then on top of that, running again 200,000 denied syscalls. And in this case, you can see that how it shows a bunch of drop syscalls. However, it doesn't show the sensitive files on trusted work. However, the problem is that this class is not very consistent. So I ran it on multiple systems, including GK cluster. I tried to understand what's the number of is denying the best that they need to overwhelm the ring buffer. And they came to these numbers, 200,000, 800,000. However, it still wasn't very consistent. And you can see that, for example, in GK class, there was only one out of 10 attempts that their pass was successful. Our buffer contained was six out of 10. However, of course, it's, it's not enough to have reliable their pass. So, if you're an attacker, it's not good. Um, so, for the fixes, you can go ahead. Take a look at the change log uh, for version 0 0.31. Not all the fixes were checked in because not all the fixes are feasible with the current fault design. And full research project is on the GitHub uh, where you can copy all kinds of one liners, etc. And I'll probably upload the presentation there as well. Now, final slide for this session. What can we do if we're uh, fault developers or we are creating another? Front-end detection tool based on rules. Well, hooking points are important. Right? You're using LBPF, LKM, uh, EBPF, LKM. Uh, doesn't matter. You, you want to resolve those signals, for example. Um, you do need to review all priorities in the bad pass context, because as you can sub, as you saw, some of the critical rules were very easy to make pass. Some of the notice rules or informational rules were very hard to make pass. So perhaps all priorities should be based on the bad pass complexity. No easy way to prevent attacks from passing the rules from either properly, and necessarily there's no re uh, there's no easy easy fix for that for that problem. It's it's, it's a design problem actually. Um, periodic checks of public exploits for the CD specific rules is needed. If you build the rules, building the rules for a specific CD, you need to monitor for the POCs for that CD and to make sure that your rules still work for those POCs. And too many rules include construct and not gain. Every and not is a gateway to the payments. That's how you should treat it. And finally, encourage clients to develop their own kind of rule set. So if you think of those scenarios that you saw, if the customer had their own rule set, chances are the attacker doesn't know about them. Because the attacker has probably uh, cheat sheet away passing the default rule set, um, but not custom rules.
And that's all I have. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. online if you have questions just put them in the chat and we can ask them for me. Let's see any message in the chat. The thank you is for you Shay in chat. My questions. Okay. So it's one bit all right so coming up next we've got firmwire taking baseband security analysis to the next level. So if you've ever tried to unlock your phone, you've probably discovered how hard that is. So imagine trying to actually analyze that baseband file and you may find some flaws in it. So that should be an interesting talk. That'll be, it's supposed to be at 1415, which an hour ago. was an hour ago. So <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Unless, unless somebody's got an exploit on time, so let's let's take a break for five minutes and then we'll come back. Um, that way you guys can do bio breaks and, and put some more coffee in yourself. All right, and that'll give us a little time to get you guys. Exactly. <laughs> So in Zoom, join me. 